All right, in this lesson, we're going to go over the different types of auditors there are when it comes to auditing. So the first one and the most common one that we're going to be talking about throughout this uh, auditing series is external auditors. Now, external auditors are not employees of the company that they're auditing. So typically, they are hired by these what we call public accounting firms. And these public accounting firms, as part of the services that they offer to their clients, uh, offer um, hire external auditors. Now, the reason why they're called external auditors is because they are independent or external of the company in which they are auditing uh, the books of. Okay? So they're not employees of the company that they're auditing. They're typically hired by these public accounting firms and part of the services that they provide is auditing services to the companies that they are auditing. Now, external auditors audit financial statements for public, private, nonprofits, and pretty much any type of organization that needs an external auditor to come in and audit the books. Uh, now, external auditors aren't just for auditing financial statements, but oftentimes that's the main service that they provide their clients is external auditing. Um, they can provide other things like tax work. They can provide other things like consulting work. Um, depending if they are going to violate the independence rule, which we'll talk about later. Um, but generally speaking, external auditors, they audit financial statements. That's their number one job and the number one service they provide to clients um, in their organization. Now, a key thing about external auditors, the external auditor that actually signs off on the audit report must be a CPA. And so the subordinates that are underneath that CPA that are doing the work or doing the audit, they don't necessarily have to be a CPA, but the person that actually signs off on the audit report saying that um, it is, we're going to issue an unqualified opinion or a qualified accept for an or adverse opinion, whoever signs off on that actual audit must be a CPA. Everybody else does not have to be a CPA, but a lot of firms kind of require it. So by the time you get to uh, what, we talk, what we call senior level or the in charge level, they typically want that individual to have a CPA license. Okay? The next type of auditor that you may encounter is what we call an internal auditor. Now, internal auditors are just like external auditors except they work for the company. So they're employees of the company that they're auditing. They cannot issue an opinion on the audit reports necessarily so or audited financial statements. They can't issue um, a, an opinion on those. However, they could sign off on saying that they believe that everything um, that they audited was okay. Now, that has no bearing in the external world of those financial statements, but internally, they may be um, important to have someone sign off on different types of audits. Now, internal auditors do financial statements. They may do internal control testing to make sure the internal controls are done correctly or they're fo being followed properly. They also do compliance au audits to make sure they're in compliance with maybe state, federal laws, or maybe they're in compliance with a covenant of a loan. And then operational audits, um, operational meaning that, that the things that the company is doing is operationally effective. Um, so they may go do that, and then forensic uh, audits, which we'll talk more at the very end of this um, lesson. Now, internal audits, uh, internal auditors do not necessarily have to have a CPA, but most of them do have a CPA, or a lot of them do have a CPA. And the reason why that they have their CPA comes down to where they're coming from. So a lot of times we see a lot of internal auditors start as external auditors, which would make sense because you get a lot of training in external auditing. And when you have that training in external auditing, you can then apply that to internal auditing. Um, so we see a lot of those internal auditors have a CPA license and they come from external audit. In addition, we're also seeing a lot of external auditors who maybe are starting a family, can't work the 55 or 60 hour minimums during busy season. They decide if they, can, if they still want to do that type of work, but they just don't want to have those long hours. So that's when they go to internal audit, which is a little bit better with uh, time management as far as 40-hour work weeks rather than um, the 60s or the 55s in busy season. So we do see a lot of that going on there. The next type of auditors is a type of internal auditor. So these are technically internal auditors at the end of the day, but they are governmental auditors. Now, governmental auditors are employed by state and local state, local, and federal agencies. Again, they're a type of auditor. And the two big ones that we know of is the Government Accountability Office, or the GAO, and then the Internal Revenue Service is also governmental auditors. So those are our two big auditors. In addition, we do have three other ones 
in the uh, government agency that also provides audit work or some type of audit work, and that would be the Army Audit Agency, the Defense Contract Audit Agency, and then of course the FBI. So those are governmental auditors. They do mostly internal audit work, but for the government or um, of the government itself, and so that's where uh, governmental auditors are important to the fabric of auditing, at, uh, the picture of auditing. Okay, And then the last one that we have is forensic auditors. Forensic auditors specifically, they are trained in detecting, investigating, and deterring fraud and white collar crime. So we talked about up here that these internal auditors um, can do forensic audits and what forensic forensic auditing is is specifically trained in detecting and investigating fraud okay so they want to catch fraud early on okay so that gives you a little bit of an idea of the different types of auditors in the next um, next lesson we're going to talk more specifically about public accounting firms